here is a demonstration module for the aquarium lab that we're doing and i want to talk a little bit about how to add the food and what i want to talk about in particular are these little i don't know what you would call them uh, objects that are floating down into the aquarium at random intervals and these represent the little pieces of food that are being fed to the turtle and the turtle will be going around let's see if i can create a turtle here Here's a turtle, and you notice that when the turtle uh, runs into one of these pieces of food, the food disappears, and uh, there's a little bloop sign that that's made. You will also notice, by the way, that when the food reaches the bottom of the aquarium, that it also disappears. And that's going to be important because if you don't do that, then the food will just pile up at the bottom and will pretty much fill up the entire aquarium at some point. So. These are the things that we want to talk about today. You can see that there are five different uh, types of food. There are five different pictures. You have to randomly select one of these pictures each time you create the food. So let's look at the code for uh, our aquarium. Here it is. Now you notice that there's no food here. And when we create the food, we can just put it as an actor. We don't have to use a smooth mover on it. It's not that important. We're not going to build a physics engine for the food pieces because it's just not that uh, relevant. And so we're going to inherit from actor. So we're going to go over here and type in new subclass and just type in food. And you can see that there are all these different food pictures, food zero through food four. So there's five of them. And instead of selecting the particular image here, you're going to have to uh, select it in your code. If you don't remember how to attach an image to a class, you can go back and look at your Wombat code to see how to set an image uh, for a particular object. Now, one of the things we're going to do is, as the game is running, we're going to randomly add food to our aquarium. That code needs to be put into the aquarium code right here. So right now, you can see that the act method for the aquarium is empty. What you're going to do in here is you're going to randomly create the food. Now, the first hint I have for you is that if you were to create a new piece of food and put it in here every single time that the aquarium has a turn to act, you will find that the rate of food production is going to be way too fast. It's going to completely fill up the aquarium nearly immediately because the program runs this act method on the aquarium extremely frequently. So what we need to do is we need to find some way of slowing down the rate of food production without slowing down the rate at which the aquarium program is running. And one of the best ways to do that is to use random numbers. And uh, you remember that in Java, we have uh, the ability to call a random number like this. And this re returns a decimal number between 0 and 1. It in includes 0 in the range, but does not include 1. But in Greenfoot, there is an easier way. And then in here, you put in a number such as that. And this will generate a number between an integer between 0 and 99. So one of the things we want to do is that we only want to periodically add food to the aquarium. We want to periodically add food. So what I can do is I can use an if statement like this. I can do it like that. And my question is, with the way that the if statement is currently written, what percentage of the time that the app method runs will the food be added to the aquarium? What percentage of the time? Like, let's say the app method runs a thousand times. Out of those thousand times, how many times will we add the food? 50% is right, sir. And I will tell you right now that a 50% rate of food addition is still going to be way too high. I would recommend that you use a number less than 5%, okay? Like 2%, 3%, 4%, something like that, all right? Now, the other thing you need to do is when you add the food, you need to randomly pick one of the five food pictures and assign it to the food item. You're gonna need to do that right in here when you create the piece of food and add it in. So you randomly select one of the pictures, 
you assign it to the food object, and then you place the food object in the tank. Let's talk a little bit about where we're going to place the food object. So let me run this again here. And you can see that the food object does not always show up at the origin. It shows up at some random x coordinate. So you need to make sure that you do the same. Uh, you know that the upper limit of the x coordinate is going to be given to you by this number right there. So when you decide where to in initially place the food in the aquarium, you're going to use this number to determine a random number of where along the x-axis that food should initially be placed. Next thing you have to realize is that the food has to go away when one of two things happen. What are those two things here? Mr. Dominic, sir, can you give me one situation where the food piece has to disappear? When a turtle eats its friend, do you happen to know the other one, sir? When it hits the bottom. So in either of those cases, you need to make the food piece go away. Now, how do you make a, an object go away? Well, if you look at the study guide, and near the end of the study guide, there is this page on hints on food. And you can see here, they give you instructions. They give you instructions on how to remove a piece of food. You need to put this code inside the food class. Got that? This code that you see here, my world remove object this, needs to be put inside the food class. It's not in the aquarium class, it's in the food class. So what happens is that you need in the food class to use some if statements to figure out, number one, am I have I reached the bottom of the tank? Number two, am I touching a turtle? And if that happens, you need to execute this command right here. Here's the other thing. Once you remove the food object, you cannot then ask the food object to do more stuff for you. Why? Because it's not there anymore. So therefore, after you do this, remove object this, the next statement in your code should be a return statement to get you out of that method so that you don't accidentally then try to get the food to change positions or do anything with it, okay? Once you remove the piece of food, you need to stop executing the food code. I've added this to your student guide on the online version, but I believe the paper version that you have does, may, may not have this, uh, this note on it. So just be aware that you need to add a return statement after you remove food or any object for that matter in, in your code. Okay, that concludes my hints on the food.